I want to talk to you about something that you've heard, or we rather, <coughs> forgive my voice, have heard a number or a couple of times. Open your Bible in the book of Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3 verse 13 to verse 18. Daniel 3, 13 reads, Then Nebuchadnezzar in a furious rage gave a command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? 15. Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sounds of a horn, pipe, lair, trigon, hap, dulcimer, and all kinds of music to fall down and worship the image which I have made, very good. But if you do not worship, you shall be thrown at once into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there who can rescue you out of my hands? 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to answer you on this point. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Hallelujah. But I'm loving verse 18 that says, but even if he does not, tell your neighbor and say, even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve or worship your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Underline the statement, let it be known to you. This is a statement of confidence. This is a statement of trust, of faith, of hope. This is, this, this is a bold statement. This is a daring statement that let it be known to you, O king, that even if, even if this God that we serve doesn't show up, we're not going to bow. How many of us in our everyday life that when we are faced with challenges, you can say to the devil, let it be known that even if even if I don't get what I want, I will still serve the Lord. If, even if I don't get blessed, I will still serve the Lord. Even if I don't get my heart desires, I will still serve the Lord. This is a statement of trust. I want to talk to you about trusting the Lord. Tell your neighbor and say, trust the Lord. Many of us, we've head of a statement, trust the process. Why? Because the process looks ugly. The process doesn't suggest or does not guarantee the product you're going to get at the end. Hence, you have to trust the process. The process is muddy. It's mixed up. It's torn up. It doesn't have a vision. It's not clear. You are not sure of what you, you're going to get. But because you are hoping and you are trusting that at the end of the day or after this process, I'm going to get what I want, you trust the process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's this thing that we, we women, when you are doing your makeup, everything is mixed up. When you have mixed your concealers and your foundations and your, 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 your contours, your blushes and... It, it's, trust me, it's a mess. But when that mess is like that, you cannot believe that this is the end result of what you get. That's why you trust the process. It's like when you're mixing sand or soil with cement and your bricks are not complete, get a piece, piece. 
and you're trying to build a house. But because you have that image of a house in your head or in your heart, you trust the process. That after the head did a little piece, piece, they are not full, they are half. You trust the process that as long as the cement and sand mixed together with these pieces of rocks, I will have a house. You trust the process. But the difference is we don't trust God the very same way. When we are faced with challenges and obstacles, you don't trust the process. You don't trust the promise. You don't trust the word of God. You don't trust what God said to you in the beginning. Why? Because the process is muddy, is mixed up. I've come to tell you, trust the process. Trust the Lord. Here, this story, we've read it, you've heard it a million times. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What I am loving is their answer. Let it be known unto you. That even if this God does not show up, I still trust he's my savior. Even if I don't get what I'm looking for, I still trust he's my deliverer. Even if I am in lack, I still trust he's my provider. Even if my bank account cannot attest to what I am saying or cannot back up the statements I am entering, I still trust that he supplies all my needs. Let it be known unto you, O King. How many of us, when you walk into that office and they say to you, the only way of you getting this job is to sleep with the boss or the person who's interviewing you or the CEO. Or you have to do a late dinner with the skimpy outfit to show that you are interested, you want this job. And if you don't do it, you can't get the job. And you are able to say in the face of the enemy, even if I don't get this job, I still trust the Lord for my job. The Bible says all promises, I love this verse, all promises are yes and in Christ they are amen. I also love this one that says, the promises of the Lord they maketh rich and adds no sorrow with it. The promises of the Lord they maketh rich. These promises they make you a child of God rich and they add no sorrow. But the the, the road or the journey that leads you to the point of no sorrow, it's trusting the process. Just because there are promises, it doesn't mean the devil won't come after you. Remember the Bible says, the devil is roaming around, turning around, roaring like a lion, searching for who to devour. Remember Job when he got sick and his wife said, insult your God and die. And his friend said, probably there's something wrong you did and God is punishing you. Why don't you just confess? You know, this God is merciful. I mean, things can't fall all at once for you. From being a richest man to the most poor begging individual in the kingdom. There must be something wrong you've done. And just like us human beings who are feeble, you tend to forget that God says, I am a just God. Contrary to what we believe, God doesn't punish you for the mistakes of our sins. Rather, is the enemy like the Bible says, who comes as if is the angel of light that comes and brings deception and brings guilt, false testimonies, false alarm, fear, desperation, despair, 
and says, no, it's because you did one, two, three. That's why one, two, three. And we forget to trust God, trusting the process.